The movie kicks off by introducing Nikita, a sniper who's all set up with his partner to watch over a weapons deal happening in Africa. While they wait for the deal to go down, Nikita takes aim with his sniper rifle and hears his partner grumbling. After a while, some soldiers, who are on Nikita's team, show up at the deal pretending to be selling weapons. When the leader of those soldiers steps out of his car, Nikita, who's keeping an eye on him through his sniper rifle, looks surprised when he sees the man. At that moment, Nikita's memories flash back to when he was a kid, held hostage, and watching his father in a fight with a bunch of tough guys who blocked their way. The fight only stopped when the gang's boss, a guy named Krasovsky, showed up. Nikita's father tried to negotiate to get his son released, but instead, Krasovsky ended up shooting and killing Nikita's dad. Surprisingly, the same gang leader who killed Nikita's father is now the leader of the soldiers Nikita was keeping an eye on. Fueled by his thirst for revenge against Krasovsky, Nikita takes a shot at the army leader, which sets off a big shootout between the soldiers and the mafia group who wanted to buy weapons. When Nikita realizes his mistake, he starts shooting at the other group so that his team can get away from the firefight. At the same time, there's an explosion near their sniper spot, and luckily, Nikita survives, but sadly, his partner doesn't make it. A few years later, Nikita now living on his own, leading an ordinary life. He keeps things simple, spending his days doing different stuff like dancing and practicing martial arts with basic equipment. After getting himself in good shape, Nikita heads over to his neighbor's place to leave his pet turtle with them and gives them some money because he's about to leave for a while. Then he goes to a cafe and walks up to a group of guys who are talking. One of them, a guy named Borovikov, tries to act tough, but Nikita doesn't seem bothered by him at all. Just when it looks like a fight might break out, a man in a suit named Rishanla, who had called both Nikita and the group of guys there, shows up and invites Nikita for a chat. At that moment, Nikita complains to Rishanla about him picking a bunch of guys who seem like troublemakers when he had hoped for experienced professionals. Rishanla tries to reassure Nikita that all his choices are capable of getting the job done, and also tells him about a woman named Kwasilava at another table in the cafe who's a professional and will help Nikita with his mission. Feeling better about having an experienced teammate, Nikita agrees to lead the mission. After their talk, Rishala introduces Nikita as the mission's team leader to everyone there. Meanwhile, over at the alcohol factory office, Vasily, who's the boss of the company, was having a meeting with some of the company's shareholders, and one of them was Sergei, the son of the Russian mafia leader who had shares in the company. During the meeting, Sergei was being rude to Vasily's new secretary, Eva, which made her mad, and she slapped him. Sergei got annoyed and asked Vasily to fire Eva, but Vasily said only Sergei's father could do that. Outside the factory, Nikita and his team were getting their gear ready for a dangerous mission they were about to go on. Unfortunately, Nikita's team members didn't want to wear the body armor he gave them, but he didn't dwell on it and started the mission. At the same time, in a surveillance room, a security guard named Sari Chief saw Eva coming in with a file and then leaving after checking one of the security camera screens like she was looking for something. Turning to Nikita and his team, who had entered an old beverage factory that used to be a weapons depot. Nikita seemed to be giving out instructions, splitting them into different groups for the mission. Even though his team followed Nikita's orders, there was always Borovikov taunting him from the back. After they split up, Nikita and a technician managed to hack the surveillance cameras, but an operator in the control room named Roma briefly noticed them. Roma checked again, but didn't pay much attention, thinking everything was fine. On the other side, Borovikov and his team approached the factory guards who were having a drink, wasting no time to attack and quickly incapacitate them. Borovikov, having taken down quite a few guards, then bragged about his skills to Nikita, who watched from the stairs above before joining in and taking out more guards trying to attack him. Soon after that, Borovikov and his team intentionally entered the guards' training room and challenged them to a fight. Surprisingly, Nikita's team had some impressive martial arts skills as they effortlessly faced off against the guards. When one of his team members, Kiryu, 
started tormenting a defeated guard, Nikita put a stop to it and warned his team not to torture anyone, instructing them to tie up the subdued guards instead. As they continued searching the beverage factory, Nikita briefly fell silent when he spotted a picture of his late father on the factory wall. Then he told his team to keep searching every corner of the building. On the other hand, Eva slipped out quietly and went to a different place. Back with Nikita's team, they had reached the cafeteria. Nikita went in alone to talk to everyone there, asking them not to fight. But the factory guards refused and started attacking Nikita. Although Nikita could handle them on his own, Borovikov and the other couldn't stand by and watch their leader fight alone, so they joined in and battled the guards. Even though they gave the guards quite a beating, the guards wouldn't give up and kept resisting. One of them even tried to attack Nikita with a weapon, but Nikita managed to overpower him. His team also managed to subdue all the guards and tie them up. During the fight, a guard named Georgie hid in the restroom, scared. When things calmed down, he quietly sneaked out of the factory. Meanwhile, Eva had entered a storage room and quickly snapped some pictures of items in boxes. Back with Borovikov and the others, they were still challenging the factory guards to fight. Suddenly, a big guy showed up and started attacking Borovikov until he couldn't fight back. Borovikov's friend tried to take on the big guy, but they all struggled to defeat him. Finally, they all attacked him together and managed to subdue the factory worker. Nikita, on the other hand, checked on Borovikov, who had broken ribs, and gave him some pain relief. After giving first aid to his team member, Nikita had some of his team take care of Borovikov, while the rest continued searching every room in the factory. Outside the factory, Georgie went to the police station to report the attack by Nikita's team to Colonel Alexander. Unfortunately, the colonel didn't arrest Georgie, as if he already knew about the attack. Inside the factory, Nikita and his team were moving through the hallways when the power suddenly went out. Strangely, the power came back on, and all the hacked surveillance cameras started working again. This caught the attention of Roma and Sari Chief, the two guards in the surveillance room, who realized that Nikita and his team were inside the factory. Roma and Sari Chief quickly locked the entrance to the meeting room, but Nikita's team managed to break through without much trouble. In the meeting room, the shareholders found out about Nikita's team's attack and decided to fight back even though Sergei wasn't too keen on it because he was afraid. They armed themselves and left the room to confront Nikita's team. Risha La tried to negotiate with the shareholders, but Sari Chief kicked him, leading to a battle between Nikita's team and the factory personnel. Nikita ended up in a sword-filled room, dueling with Sari Chief. Meanwhile, other members of Nikita's team had to face two burly shareholders armed with sharp weapons. On the other side, an older guy named Dimitri, who was also part of Nikita's team, tried to stop Roma from destroying a computer to erase all data about the factory. Using his martial arts skills, Dimitri managed to knock out Roma with just one strike. After defeating all the guards, Risha La locked the shareholders in the meeting room and forced them to hand over their shares. If they refused, Risha La threatened to expose all their crimes to the government. Meanwhile, Nikita and the rest of his team were trying to break through the steel-reinforced door to Vasily's room, but it was proving to be quite a challenge. Vasily, armed with a rifle, tried to shoot through the wall to attack Nikita's team outside the room. Because of the gunshots, some residents who heard them called the police, led by Colonel Alexander, who arrived at the alcohol warehouse area. The colonel didn't seem eager to respond to the resident's report because he had an agreement with Rishala not to interfere with the attack happening at the factory. While Alexander was talking with Rishala through an intercom, Vosili appeared at the window and reassured them that everything was okay. Because of this, the colonel finally decided to leave the beverage factory area. On the other hand, Nikita told Kiryu to capture Vasili, but Kiryu ignored the order and went to check the factory office, where he found Eva hiding in a locker. Kiryu easily caught Eva and threatened her, but luckily, Nikita arrived and told Kiryu not to harm her. Kiryu wasn't happy about getting scolded by his team leader, so he, along with his comrades, attacked Nikita in the room after hearing the commotion. 
Despite being outnumbered, Nikita managed to defeat his team members. Meanwhile, Eva quietly made her way to Vasily's room, where she crossed paths with Rishala. At the same time, Nikita was forced to fight his angry team members, and they kept fighting until Nikita was defeated and on the floor. Then Rishala came in and tried to get Vasily to leave the room by threatening to harm Eva. Out of pity for his secretary, Vasily chose to come out of hiding while pointing his gun at everyone. Surprisingly, Nikita quickly dragged Eva and Vasily back into the room. Vasily pointed his gun at Nikita, but Nikita easily disarmed him. While holding the gun on Vasily, Nikita admitted that he was the son of one of the top executives of the alcohol company and that he was there that night to find out about the weapons that had caused his father's death in the past. On the other hand, Eva, who turned out to be a former police officer, had joined the factory on purpose to seek revenge for her commander's death, which was related to the top executives of the factory. Outside the building, Krasovsky, who was somehow still alive, showed up with his military forces in response to the report about the attack at the factory. Alexander seemed to welcome the military leader, who now had control of the beverage factory. Meanwhile, Nikita and his team looked terrified and tried to run away. At the same time, Krasovsky's team managed to get inside the building by hacking the security system and opening the factory gate. Nikita tried to escape through the ventilation system, while Krasovsky's team, who had been searching the office area, finally ran into Nikita's team and Rishala, who claimed to be the new owner of the company. Tension built up as Krasovsky's team pointed their guns at Rishala and his crew, leading to a shootout between the two groups. Nikita realized he had to help his teammates, so he started taking out Krasovsky's henchmen. Once the firefight was stopped and Nikita saw one of his team members injured, he ordered everyone to leave the building. But Risha La disagreed because he wanted complete control of the alcohol factory, so Dimitri attacked him until he passed out. Vasily, who had just come out of his room, asked them to release the tied-up people and then leave in the factory bus through a tunnel. As everyone got on the bus, Nikita went to the storage room to get the weapon he was looking for. Just as the bus was about to leave, Krasovsky's troops suddenly started shooting at it and ordered everyone who was still alive to get off. Krasovsky saw that Vasily was still alive and demanded to know who had caused all the chaos in the factory. When Vasily didn't answer, Krasovsky hit him. From a distance, Nikita aimed his rifle at Krasovsky and was about to shoot, but he remembered his grandfather's advice to do good and hesitated. Krasovsky then locked everyone up in the warehouse, and his team started moving important items from the storage room. He kept asking who had caused the chaos at the factory. Rishala raised his hand and Krasovsky shot him dead. Then, Krasovsky challenged the remaining members of Nikita's team to fight him, and Alexei accepted, but he was quickly defeated by the military leader. At the same time, Nikia was taking out Krasovsky's troops, one by one, and freeing the people held captive in the warehouse. He had some help from a police officer named Artom, who directed everyone to get on the bus to safety. Once he made sure everyone was okay, Nikita went back into the factory and took out all of Krasovsky's troops he came across, disarming them as well. When Krasovsky and two of his henchmen showed up, Nikita secretly planted a bomb on a door, which killed one of Krasovsky's henchmen. On the other hand, when everyone had left the warehouse, Kiryu, Vasily, and Eva decided to stay behind and help Nikita. Meanwhile, Nikita still had to deal with a lot of Krasovsky's henchmen, which was a tough situation. Thankfully, Artham came back and assisted Nikita in eliminating Krasovsky's military troops. While Krasovsky and his men leaving the factory, they came under gunfire from Kiryu and others. Sadly, Kiryu got shot and decided to take out some of Krasovsky's henchmen by setting off a bomb, but it cost him his life. Krasovsky was briefly caught in the explosion but survived. He tried to shoot Vasily and Eva, but Nikita intervened, pointing a weapon at him. Krasovsky asked about Nikita's true identity and invited him to join him, but Nikita firmly declined because he was out to avenge his father's death. They got into a fierce battle, and thanks to Nikita's training, he managed to defeat Krasovsky.
He felt relieved because he had gotten his revenge. However, unexpectedly, Krasovsky, despite being wounded, got up and attacked again, so Nikita quickly used his firearm to eliminate the man who had killed his father. In the end of the film, it showed Eva and Vasily approaching Nikita and inviting him to leave the place. Moral lesson from the story, when in doubt, remember that fighting Russian mafia bosses in an alcohol factory rarely ends with a happy ending.